I was up in northern Kenya among the Luai tribe. I looked around and I saw all these villages, no way to hear the gospel. And I looked up, I knew up in the sky, the FPBC and Transworld Railway there. And God said, Alan, go home and build a little solar radio. And then I met two wonderful people, Ken Crowell from Tiberias, Israel, and Harold Kent from uh, Tampa, Florida. And they had a vision to flood the world with radios. Harold said he wanted to flood the world. Ken had a vision to build a little fixed tune radio. And then God brought the three. We came with a purpose. We were committed to reach the most unreached people, providing durable technical equipment, communicating the gospel worldwide. There was an incandescent moment in Florida. They were introduced together by a man named Dan Carvinen, and they realized each one had the same vision. Ken had designed a radio. Harold had the passion and the money to build it. Alan had the distribution network, new people all around the world that would use those radios, and God has done great things. So the idea was uh, to bring the production here into Hamilton or into Canada. The units would need to be built in such a way that it was easy to manufacture and the manufacturing at that time was done by putting individual parts on the board by hand. If we're looking in Ontario or Canada, it had to be made in such a way that it was very easy to produce. To tune these radios, it was still, just like Tom said, it was still a manual process. And there was no way around that until the technology came out to allow us to tune it digitally. And then uh, we were able to change the radio so that you just put in a frequency and then it was programmed and locked onto that frequency. There was no more adjusting uh, parts on it, which, which saved in labor cost. Well, Alan and uh, Ken and uh, Harold had brought uh, the production of the radios to Canada and that was in a rented uh, industrial facility um, about 200 up yards up the road. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden the building appeared. Well, well I mean it was there, but it came for sale. Turns out that the realtor who had it for sale was a good friend of mine, and so it was easy to work together to, uh, to come to a, a, a deal on that building. And when I looked at it with Ken, it was full of moving storage crates. The ceiling was 20 feet high, <laughs> and it was going to be a challenge to drop the ceiling down in the office area on these very long wires going 20 feet high. So, so we got the idea that... Uh, Maybe we could put a future second floor in. It was amazing how God brought all of that together. I was on a trip in South Sudan one time. We were putting in a, a small station, and it's hot. It's flat, open territory. It's a bit of a tough assignment. And we're on this small compound, and I looked at it and said, I'm sitting here soldering wires together and whatnot, this whole process could be pre-packaged for something on this scale. And I started drawing on paper and, and pulling some ideas together. And then I went to Tim and to Tom Blackstone at a conference one time and said, I've got this idea. What resulted was we have two special cases that are meant to go on the airline shock absorbers in them, all the equipment is packed in there and you can walk up to the airline counter and they are the exact size, they're designed for the broadcast industry to take on an airline. And then a tube with an antenna in it, you can take an entire fully functional FM radio station as a company baggage and it will run on the power that we have here, you plug it in the wall, you can plug it in the wall in Africa, the 220, or if you've got a solar power system you can run it on battery. One thing we noticed was when the Bible was complete, or the New Testament, you're giving a book to people who don't know how to read. So, you know, you've given them a very precious thing, the Word of God, but it fell short in the sense that people had no way of understanding it because they couldn't read it. Because the reality is that even the pastors, many of them have a grade one, grade two reading level, if they can read it all. And so in order to be able to prepare a sermon, they'd have to ask a child sometimes to read a portion of scripture and then prepare a sermon, so very weak. Whereas now with radio, what we're finding is that we've been back to the same area a few times and the pastors are actually plugging in a Galcom radio into, an, into um, 
an amplifier, and then a message is being preached from the radio station, and hand, groups of Incredible. people are hearing the word of God that way. Many of the women that work, that live in Peru, they have a, they work long, hard days. They go out into the into the camps, into the countryside, and when they're in the countryside, they look after their sheep, and they're there by themselves. And often, many of them have been abused by their husbands or by people in their lives. They've been hurt. They have to work really, really hard. And sometimes they go out there and they cry. And Rosa, the lady that we work with, Rosa Saxada, she said, you know, she said, now these ladies, they have these radios and they can sit and they can listen to God's word. And she said, it brings them comfort to know that they can hear God's word throughout the day. The first time we went, we were with a pastor and his wife and they were the ones running the radio station. And they said, this is amazing. You've just given out a hundred radios in our village, but we need more. Do you have more? And we said, we didn't. But we said, let's pray together. So we bowed our heads and prayed. This year, we were able to go back to the same church and give them 100 more. But you know what? It's a drop in the bucket. Our, our vision would be to go two or three times a year with teams that's going to take resources for radios, resources for people to carry them down. But yeah, we'd like to go two or three times a year as God permits and um, continue to take the word down there. Okay, let me give you some details. This, this is the very first prototype of the new radio. Uh, it's a 3D print of the case, so it's not the case as it will be eventually. It has the, the same shape and a similar color. One thing we kept the same is the antenna. That thing here, which is a lanyard, it's also the antenna. That's, that's a very brilliant development that was done the years before, so we are not going to reinvent what doesn't need to be reinvented. But as you know, technology is moving fast. So we're trying to, to harness all this technology and, uh, and put that into this little box and make it even better. And there's one thing that is happening out there um, in terms of technology. The price of memory is dropping fast. And actually, not only the, because the price is dropping so fast, the memory that we have in the, um, the current radio, we can't get it anymore because it's too small. And so in this one, we'll have a bigger memory. That means we can put higher quality content because we don't need to compress it so much. We could also put more content, but if we put more content, then we need to work on the navigation. We need a smarter navigation. We need an answer to a question we heard about or a problem that we heard from the field, like people couldn't bookmark where they were listening. When they stopped listening, the next day they had to start again uh, in Genesis. So you can imagine, until they get to the New Testament, it would take quite some hours. So this is something we've uh, taken, taken into account for the new radio, that the bookmarking will work in a smarter way. And that should help the, the listener even better. But that's just uh, one example of the things uh, we try to embed in a new player. Another thing is, we, we are switching to a new battery technology. I'm not going to give you the, uh, the technical terms, but it's the same battery type like in electric cars. So this is a, a pretty recent technology, and we will have in that uh, device only one battery that has, has the shape of a AA battery, but that, that has more energy than we had with the two AA batteries that we had before or currently. Well, this is another example of uh, the, the uh, technology we are harnessing. We are also um, working on, the, on a solar, uh, putting a, a bigger solar panel in the back. We, we, we're using the whole back for the solar panel, where the other one had uh, the little battery door. So the, the reason why we, we, we have a big panel is because we want the, uh, the radio to work just with sunlight, even if the battery dies. We try to make them durable, and uh, this technology of batteries is, is so new, uh, people claim it has four times the cycles that of the current batteries, and I believe it. Uh, as I said, that's the, the first 3D prints of the case. The case design is finished, and we are going to, to build the mold to inject the plastic to make the cases. For the inside, we are working with actually Mega Voice, and they link us with their, their suppliers of, uh, of PCBs, as of boards, and, and all the guts is developed together with Mega Voice, and we are still in the development with that. 
We also got a first prototype, and there are still uh, several cycles of, uh, of improving it until it can reach the level of uh, making the radio uh, to go on the market. Thank you so much for partnering with us. Thank you so much for, for those that are volunteering each day at Galcom, for those of you that are praying for us, and of course that you are, that are giving this evening towards this special project. Thank you.